A brand new sports update DLC has arrived for F1 22 and this may be the biggest post-release DLC F1 have ever done. So the biggest surprise in this sports update DLC for me personally at least is that the flying fin returns. That Mika Hakkinen is going to be added into the game as a brand new icon for my team career mode. Now that's surprising because so far ever since we've had icons in my team career mode former world champions or just you know fan favorite drivers that aren't in the sport anymore uh, we have never had post-release icons added in we've had the original 2021 icons that added in we got a new influx of them for f122 but we've never had one that's released later down the line so this is very much following the pattern of one of ea's other sports titles fifa as they've added icons into ultimate team before you know post-release down the line sometimes they finally sign the deal with the player to get them in the game or there's some sort of you know just calendar based kind of reason why they should be added in at that point of the year not earlier um and so now for whatever i don't really know what the reasoning is but they've managed to get mika hakkinen on board to become an icon in my team career mode so just reading the official line from codemasters and ea here making a surprise debut in f122 two-time world champion mika hakkinen will be available for all players as a my team icon F122 Champions Edition players can ignite old rivalries whilst competing against existing icons, including Michael Schumacher, who Hakkinen named as his biggest rival. Mick Hakkinen will be redeemable in, a, in the game for a limited time. All you need to do is log in and check your in-game messages. So that's the mail icon on the top right, if you didn't know, between October 17th and November the 7th in order to add him into your game. So right now, as this video gets posted, it's October 11th. So in six days time, that's when you have to look out for this opportunity to get Mika Hakkinen into your game for use in my team Karimo. Bit of a weird one because the sports updates come now, but then they're not uh, releasing him into the game until six days after. Because right now, the rest of the update is there, as I'll go into in a second. But this part of the update specifically is not available yet. You'll be able to download it later on. And that's the same case for something else, which is kind of very left field here for Formula 1 games. But uh, the gritty celebration is in F1 now. Reading the official line, finally, we've got one more freebie for you, the gritty, which has taken US sports celebrations to an entirely new level makes its way into F122. Now the gritty celebration is already in one of EA's other titles, Madden, which is obviously the US uh, American football sport. Um, so that's already in Madden. So you can already see this is clearly a tie-in with, you know, EA's branch of sports franchises. Literally the video they put out to announce this used footage from Madden in conjunction with the F1 game and also actual the actual drivers of uh, Joe Guan Yu and Valtteri Bottas because that's how they, uh, for whatever reason, wanted to explore it. Maybe because, you know, Joe Guan Yu and Bottas were the only ones that would have maybe done it. I don't know. Maybe they asked Alfa Romeo like, you know, would your drivers be up for it? And they said yes. And because it is a little bit childish, a bit weird um, to see in an F1 game because you don't really see, you know, it makes sense in Madden. It makes sense in FIFA because you see wacky celebrations, dance celebrations in these sports. But Formula 1 drivers never Never really bother with it too much. I think the closest thing would be Sebastian Vettel's Egyptian dance, which they do have in the game. But all the other kind of things that the F1 game have had added so far in terms of celebrations for the podium have just been ones they've made up on the spot by themselves. So it's a weird thing to put in, but I can see why they've done it because of that crossover. They've literally probably even got help from the Madden guys, that team, in terms of like the animation coding or whatever. I don't know how it really works, but I would see I would say there's probably parallels of sharing ideas across into the F1 game, which is why they put it in. But that again is also only available from October the 17th. Now the rest of the update is your usual kind of sports update they'd like to do at this time of the year. So finally now the current F2 C Season is available in the game to play for career mode, Grand Primo, time trial, multiplayer, the full F2 2022 season of, of course, Felipe Drogovic has already wrapped up that championship. But as they say, you have an hour chance to
to rewrite history uh, by playing it for yourself now. Podium Pass Series 3 is now underway with the usual kind of, you know, wacky new liveries and overalls, etc, etc. To be fair to them, even though the, the flame livery that they've shown in promo shots kind of looks like one of those old, like, 80s bowling shirts, if you had the ability to stick sponsors wherever you wanted to on the car, that would actually be a funny kind of good fun livery to use one time if you went to this uh, or you know the, the usgp in your career mode but the fact you can't place the sponsors anywhere and so already you know that the side pod sponsor if you're on console will clash so much with that flame on the side pod so you know there's they, they steps forward and step backwards they do sometimes make some nice liveries that i can even even i can see like oh, okay that's quite a nice funny livery or like a cool one to do as, as a one-off but then they shoot themselves in the foot because they've still got that archaic sponsor placement um, thing with the livery. And then also sometimes these special liveries, you can't even put sponsors on them. So it's like very bare bones and the only real joy of maybe just having a laugh with your mates with it on, on multiplayer. But for career mode, the car is going to stick out like a sore thumb and just not have any realism. And finally, on top of that with the podium pass, the new McLaren livery that they had for Singapore and Japan is in the game now. That again, like the Ferrari livery is limited. So now you'll see the yellow Ferrari is no more in the game. And now the McLaren has this new OKX livery, which will be, again, limited for about a month. But they have said, unlike the Ferrari livery, they never specify this, I don't think, but they specify with this McLaren livery that um, it, once it changes back to the standard one, the livery itself, the, the, the design of it, from December will be available for download for free to use on your player car. So like the white Red Bull uh, kind of Honda Japanese celebration livery, the white Red Bull livery on last year's game, how that was available to use on your My Team car. So you could use it in career mode and also more importantly online, you could use the, the white Red Bull if you have if you're using the FOM cars. Uh, this will be available. The McLaren OKX livery will be available on the My Team car. I feel like it won't look as good on that very bulky, bulgy My Team car uh, chassis compared to the sleek and slender McLaren one, but it's still pretty cool that they're gonna allow us to have it downloaded afterwards, the fact, on the player car, just like they did they did with the Red Bull one. I don't know why the Ferrari one isn't available, or maybe it is going to be, and I've just missed the, the news of it, but I don't know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if Ferrari just said, no, we don't want this available elsewhere, it's just meant to be for this time. Makes more sense, I guess, for them, because it was a very specific celebration of 75 years, whereas this McLaren livery is just kind of a sponsor special for those two races, so there's no kind of date kind of for celebration it could just be used without context you know willy-nilly for the next couple of months and that is all the new content in the sports update dlc um no matter what you think of each individual part this does seem to be like the biggest update they've done in terms of just numbers of headline things or like headers that they're putting in because you've got you know let, let's count them up then you've got the f2 2022 season you've got the future is here uh with a mclaren livery which is number two i'm reading this off the article by the way podium pass season uh, series three so number three, Flying Finn returns. Number four, fly the flag for or the Austrian GP because they, they felt the need to really uh, promote that they've got a special US livery. To be fair, that could just be classed in the podium pass one and then do the gritty. So they've got about five, six different things going on here in this update. And as they, send, as they say themselves, this is the biggest update they've done so far. That in itself is quite promising. You know, that means that they're thinking about in the future of upping the stakes of putting even more content post-release down the line. I just feel like hopefully with that kind of direction and with the way we've seen they uh, EA do things with FIFA and Madden with post-release updates and plenty of content, like how many times do you see on Twitter if you you know if you follow people who are like FIFA YouTubers and stuff, you see so many updates on Ultimate Team every single month of like you know Team of the Week. Obviously, it's a little bit different for F1, but Team of the Week and you see like content packs and you know just different things going around different points of the season like Halloween, Christmas, etc. So it would be cool to see that upped more in the F1 game. I'm thinking like really go ham on my team icons and let them be put into the game. You know, go out there and try and chase up deals with former drivers. And then also special liveries, like any special livery a team does, let us update it. You know, even small tweak liveries for just sponsors and whatever from race to race, try and push to be able to update those. I know that kind of stuff takes time and it's red taped, so maybe they can't be very reactive with it, but I would love this trend to continue just more and more being crammed in to these post-release updates 
But at the same time, I'm still not letting up on the fact that they need to do better with the podium pass. The spawn to decals need to be able to be moved around and used on any livery you want, not just the ones that are not special enough. Um, and then also just the designs themselves. I still maintain they need, they need a livery editor. But of course, I don't see things changing for a bit. But kudos to them for where it counts in terms of the updates for Mika Hakkinen. That's one I really like. I like the fact that a two-time world champion and someone who's as popular as Mika is going to be added into the game. I know so many people like older F1 fans who loved the McLaren West days are going to love that update um, and that's really cool that's probably the bit the best part of this entire update for me personally and it's good to see more of that please Codemasters and EA for the Formula 1 games but guys that's been your video just to update you on that patch I thought since it was the biggest patch they've done so far in the history of the F1 games I had to make a video about it and kind of show you guys what's what so if you have enjoyed it hit the like button let me know what you thought in the comments below about any of that stuff in the update and uh, what I made of it if you're on your round here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.